everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today's video is on oscilloscopes, and this is the entry-level video, the first and probably a few videos having to do with uh, different electronic and radio repair equipment. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, oh, and do me a favor, will you? Click on the subscribe button for me. It gets my video in front of more people and gives them the opportunity to learn as well. With that, let's go ahead and get on with the show. Well, all right. I wanted to start the video out with just some really basic stuff about scopes. And um, I thought the best way to do it would be to start with a couple illustrations and, uh, and try to make this all make sense to the folks that really haven't had any exposure to oscilloscopes at all. The big thing to remember here is what we're actually looking at. So if you think of an oscilloscope, think of a graph where you're looking at voltage and time, okay? Voltage on the up-down axis and time on the left-to-right axis. If you think of it that way, it makes a little more sense. Now, we look at the same thing over and over again, but we're looking at the current state. So you need to think a little bit out of the box at what you're looking at. If uh, you grew up in the time period I grew up, you know, there were like parties, man, and like strobe lights, you know, and, and you'd go dancing, man, and they'd have like these strobe lights, and it was like robots in ev oh, yeah, sorry, man, uh, flashback. Anyway, let me uh, go ahead on that basis, though. Think of taking a snapshot whenever the voltage changes to a point where your trigger is set to take that snapshot. That's why when you look at a scope, whether it's currently reading or you're looking at a picture of it, it kind of looks the same. The thing is, though, when you're actually sampling data, you're looking at that data in very close to real time uh, because it has to be processed if it's a digital scope. And you're looking at it based on the perimeters that you have set forth as far as the voltage scale and the time scale, as well as the perimeters that you've set up for when it's supposed to refresh the screen. And that screen refresh, that view that gets changed, is based on your trigger. And the trigger looks for a rise or a drop in voltage to set off that quote unquote snapshot. Just like a strobe light, when someone is walking, it may not look like they're moving at all other than in a direction. Or if someone's dancing, it may not look like they're moving at all, but they are. Anyway, with that, let's take a look at something that's kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, it was the first electronics oscilloscope that I ever bought, and uh, it's fun to look at, and it helps you understand a little bit more the basic controls of an oscilloscope. All right, well, this is a oscilloscope. Uh, I purchased this 1982. This actually is older than my oldest child. Um, and I use this mostly in the automotive uh, electronics field. Back in the very early days of onboard computers, uh, we needed devices like this to test things. Uh, so bottom line, this was my first electronics oscilloscope. I'd uh, owned several oscilloscopes in the automotive industry, but that's ancient history. So let me go ahead and throw the power switch here, and you notice that it takes a little while for this thing to kind of warm up. Slowly, you'll see a display there. So there we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just open up a 
a pattern on this. Let's see. Ah, there we go. So what we have here is a regular old sine wave. Uh, and, um, you know, a lot of times you would actually, uh, not like the modern scopes, you have to actually figure out where the settings are here. And what I'm going to do right now, what I'm doing is I'm adjusting again uh, my uh, uh, variable uh, sweep time divisions and I'm looking I can look right here at what those time divisions are right so as I come down here I can just farther and farther down on my time divisions and then here I've got a fine tune right now that's off right there uh, but what I can do is I can turn this on and basically just adjust this out a little bit finer. Now, uh, my trigger level, of course, I set my trigger level here. Uh, you have a plus and a minus, and I have to get it to where it's triggering and I can see it. Now, uh, if I have it pushed in and I go past the trigger level, nothing shows, right? Why is that? Well, there's nothing to trigger it. Uh, if I have it pulled out, that's auto trigger, which means that it will always have something on the screen. And of course, normal, I can trigger on the minus or the negative or on the positive. Then I can also trigger on TV sync. Um, and of course, I can choose what to trigger on, whether it be channel A or channel B. Over here, I've got my variable volts, go down, I can also do the same thing with this, but we can, yeah, I'm sorry, it's hard to work around these, it's a very, very small panel. Alright, so I can take it up like this, but then I can manually slip it down. See how that works? It gives me a division. Let's go down just a little more here, there we go, ah, uh, that looks good. And of course, now I can change the height, okay, of where my zero line is, right? So uh, I can basically balance it between the grooves. Now I happen to know what my divisions are here, so I know that I've got two and a half volts on either side of the zero. So I'm pretty close with that. Um, and uh, that's really, we've dealt with all three of our settings. Now, if I want to actually take a measurement here on this old analog device, I would have to actually count the little things right here, right? I'd have to count all of these divisions and figure out exactly where top and bottom was. And then I'd have to look at this to figure out where my divisions were for voltage, right? Same thing for time. I'd have to do the same thing and then look at, look at my setting over here to figure out where time was. So, um, and of course, if I wanted to see what my trigger level was, I really couldn't. I could move it up past the top, right, and then bring it down, and I could assume that I'm triggering there on one point or on uh, 2.5, but I also could swing it down. Uh, I'm on the positive side, so right about there, would be zero and I could adjust this to zero time right there to get a little bit cleaner look at the signal. A lot of adjustments, huh? So again, this does everything that a modern scope does um, the same way a modern scope does it. The only difference is with a modern digital scope, all the measurement tools, everything is available to me on menus. Uh, but we're looking at the three settings that are going to be very important to get a pattern on a screen of any scope. So with that, let's take a look at a modern scope. All right, well, here we have a little bit more modern scope. This is a Siglent uh, SDS1202X-E. This is a hobbyist scope. It's uh, sub four hundred, and on some days it's sub three hundred dollars, um, and uh, it's quite a nice little scope. 
uh, does 200 megahertz, which is probably more than enough for just about any amateur radio operator, um, you know, unless you're really starting to get up into UHF frequencies and stuff like that. And really, we're using this to test uh, electronic uh, components. We're not really hooking radios to this. Um, other than some stuff we'll see later on how you do that. So you take this thing out of the box, you plug it in, you turn it on. Bob's your uncle. It boots right up. Now, once this is done booting up, uh, we're going to kind of go through exactly what you want to do initially when you buy one of these things, right? So it's going to come up and it's going to have up oh, a trace on it. And I'm going to, there's a default button right there. I'm going to push that and it's going to go right in to the default settings. Now, I want to do a self calibration. Now, if for whatever reason this is on another menu or something like that, I can always get back to that uh, by hitting utility. And of course, we can take our cursors off here. I'll hit utility and I get back to this. This is where I'm going to set my language. I turn my sound off. Um, I can do a pass fail test on it. Um, do IO. Uh, checks, you know, how it's going to talk to other stuff. Uh, I can update firmware, all that good stuff. Uh, I can do a complete self-test and um, do a reference position. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do my self-cal. And basically, it tells me disconnect everything from all the ports. There's a USB port in the back, a network port. Uh, all the ports on the front, I've got everything disconnected, and it tells me go ahead and press single to begin. So we'll go ahead and start doing that. Now this is going to go through a total recalibration. This takes a little bit of time. I'm not going to uh, make you sit here and watch the entire thing at real time, but I am going to take an opportunity while we're sitting here to talk a little bit about uh, the things that are really the same on this as our old analog scope. And what are those? Well, um, we have our vertical settings, which is in volts. We have our horizontal uh, settings, which is in time. And we have our trigger setting, which is basically the same selections that we had before. Where auto you pulled out, auto is a button on this, right? We have normal trigger and we have single trigger. We'll go over that briefly in this video. Uh, horizontal, of course, we're setting our time. Uh, it has an interesting button right there called roll, which means that it will just pass uh, everything that goes on in this rolling wave across the screen. The advantage to that is um, if you're looking for something that's strange or abnormal, you can see it in this flow over time. Uh, in other words, rather than having a window that is continually having the background move behind it but is synced with your trigger, what you have is you have everything moving from right to left as if you're looking at a chart of the voltage uh, going in and out of the system. Kind of cool. Of course, the vertical, this is a uh, two-channel scope. I've never needed more than two channels. Uh, it may be something that uh, at one time uh, you've needed three or four. I haven't, so I haven't really worried about it. Um, down below these, by the way, something important. It talks about all inputs and stuff like that. And uh, this one says that uh, it should not have over 400 volts peak power. Um, and uh, we'll go into that. I uh, actually usually don't worry about... Uh, too much voltage, 400 volts is a lot, but uh, there is a setting on your probe that allows you to attenuate voltages, really high voltages down. Uh, and uh, I'm told that the uh, uh, 10x setting, which attenuates them by 10x, is actually more along the lines of something that you can um, use under high voltage and is much more sensitive. Anyway, we've talked about the three settings. That's 
all a scope really needs. Uh, we're going to go into some really cool stuff here in a second, though, after this thing's done calibrating. So uh, for now, let's let it go, and I'll be right back. All right, so that's that. Let's go ahead and do what it's telling us to do, which is hit stop run, and that takes it out of self-calibration mode. Now, our next chore is to calibrate our probe. So let's see here. All right. So I have right here, this is a, uh, I'm trying to hold it up for you. This is basically a 200 uh, megahertz probe. Uh, and I am looking here at this, I have X10 here, and I have X1, and there's a switch, okay? So what this switch actually does is in X, uh, in 1X, what happens is anything that comes in here is not attenuated, and it goes directly into the device. In 10X mode, it attenuates whatever the signal is by 10. So if I'm putting in 100 volts, it will drop it to 10 volts. This is very important when we're dealing with high voltage. Okay. Now, on this, I actually have a little place for a screwdriver. Uh, and they give me a little tool with it to use to go ahead and adjust this out. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this up to my uh, probe one, regular old BNC connector, just push it in and twist it. I need to hook the ground up to, uh, to the ground here. And what this is, is this is a reference generator connection, all right? So what it does is it puts a reference voltage on here uh, for me to calibrate against. Now, remember with our analog scope, we had to do all these crazy adjustments and do all sorts of other stuff. With this, all I have to do is hit auto setup. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to calibrate, or not calibrate, but it's going to set the best view for me to adjust this. Now, what I'm really looking at is I'm looking at the leading edges here, okay, where it comes up and it makes the cut, and then when it's at the bottom, it makes the cut. I'm going to stick my little tool in here, and we're going to get it in there, and then I'm going to twist it. Oh, very important, by the way, I do have to be on 10X. Ah, I wasn't. So let me go ahead and recalibrate. I switched to 10X. You see how that dropped down? So it's only a tenth of the... Oh, yeah, now you can see what the leading edge issue is here, right? So let's go ahead and fix that. Uh, here. All right. Uh, come on. There we are. Up. So I can just adjust this out to where it's flat. Just like that, okay? That's all there is to it. We're done with that. We, we can switch real quick to 1x and hit uh, uh, auto setup just to look to make sure it's square there. It should be without any problem. Should look pretty good. Looks great. Let's switch back to 10x one more time. We'll hit auto setup. We just want to verify that it's still looking good, which it is. I'm good with that. All right. So if we were going to be checking higher voltages and had it in the 10x position, we'd want to push uh, the uh, port that we're on, the trace, and we have right here probe and it says 1x. If I was going to keep it on 10x, right, I would turn around and select 10x. And of course, that's going to change all, oop, went to 20x. See how that goes? hit it wrong. There we go. 10x, and it's going to change all of our settings here for 10x, okay? Uh, that makes sure that our voltage and our time and all that is all uh, properly configured. And by the way, it only attenuates the voltage. 
does not attenuate the frequency or the time uh, that uh, it takes for it to cycle. Okay, just be aware of that. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and hook this up to a real world pattern and take a look at that. All right, and I'm going to be running this at 1x. So I'm going to change the probe display back to 1x. And I am going to go ahead now and hit the auto tune here, auto setup. And I have nothing. Why is that? I don't have a signal on it yet. Let's turn a signal on. And again, we'll hit auto setup and see what that gives us. And there we are. We have a sine wave pattern. Now, um, if this was a oh, uh, old analog scope, I would be counting these divisions and I'd have to look over at my controls to see what those divisions are. But this is a digital scope. So I can look right here and I see that my voltage divisions are 2 volts per uh, large square. So if I count 1, 2, I've got 2.5 on the top and two and a half squares on the bottom, that tells me that my peak-to-peak uh, -peak is going to be what? Do the math, guys. It's going to be 10 volts peak-to-peak. -peak. Now, if I'm looking at time divisions, I'll look up here, and I see that 500 microseconds is each division here. So, I'm going to say, all right, a full cycle is going to be from here to there. So from there to there, that means that that is, if that's 100 or 500 microseconds, two of these would be what? A thousand microseconds or one millisecond. And one millisecond would be a thousand uh, hertz or one kilohertz. All that simple. Okay. Now we can obviously confirm that also with measurements. So I can go into measure here and I can turn all the measurements on that are available. It'll come up in this box here and um, I'm just going to scooch this down a little bit. There we go. But what we have is we have peak to peak is 10.32 volts. The top is 5.4 the base is 496, the max is, um, uh, uh, voltage has been 520 on the high side, the minimum has been 512 on the low side, my RMS, right, is 3.55 volts. We can look at that, our RMS voltage right here on our DVOM, 3.52 versus 3.55. So I'm going to say that, uh, you know what, uh, the scope is probably closer than the fluke is. Uh, let's go ahead. I can also take a look at the hertz here, and this is one kilohertz. So that matches too. Um, but this is interesting because if you're using this to check voltages, right, even if it's an AC voltage, remember it's going to give the RMS, okay? Now, what happens if we're actually trying to use this to do something a little more, right? So I'm going to turn this over to DC volts, and I'm going to just change a couple things really quick on this uh, wave uh, uh, signal generator that I have over here. I am going to go to... Um, CMOS. All right, and I am going to go ahead and hit auto setup here again. All right, and you see the one down here, so that's zero. So everything is above the line, right? My peak to peak right there, guess what? That is uh, 10.32. I have nothing on the bottom though, nothing below zero. My RMS is uh, 7.11. Now I'm looking at DC here. The AC isn't showing that, right? It's all off because it's confused. It is seeing a square wave. 
the DVOM doesn't really know how to deal with the square wave, right? Now, I can also actually change the uh, duty cycle on this, uh, bring the duty cycle up, see how my square wave's changing, all of a sudden everything is going more above the line. I'm at 90% duty cycle, so 90% here uh, is the mean now, which is 9.6, and you can see right there I'm at 9.0. Um, so the voltage, right, the peak voltage hasn't changed at all, but yet me moving the duty cycle around is affecting what my voltmeter sees, but I'm seeing the actual voltage here on the system. So I, I kind of just wanted to show that to you because I thought it was interesting. A lot of people say, well, I've got a DVOM and I can look everything up on my DVOM and it's fine. Uh, you know, yeah, I guess. Um, sure, why not, right? But I don't know. All right, we're going to change back to the sine wave and we're going to do the auto setup again. Oop, I hit auto there. I'm going to do the auto setup here, and I'm going to get rid of our measurements. There we go. All right. So, there you have it. Now, I am going to go ahead and add a second trace. And I'll do that by plugging the other trace into my system here. Uh, under trace 2, and I will turn trace 2 on. Now, interestingly enough, trace 1 and trace 2 are identical traces. However, they're under different settings. Now, I could hit auto on this, absolutely, uh, or I, of course, could just increase the voltage right there, and I could hit this, right here to set to zero and this to set to zero. If I click this, it'll change it to one. So interestingly enough, take a look at where zero is, okay? Zero for both of them are at the same point right there. Doesn't matter, they're both zero. This one though is under it. Why is it under it? If these are both set to zero, well, because we've introduced a negative two volt DC voltage in here. And you can see if each one of these divisions is two volts, all right, there you go from a half division to a half division, right? That would be two volts. Now, let's say I wanted to strip out all of that DC. All right, so first things first, I'd hit channel two and I'd make sure my channel two was selected here, okay? See where it says channel two up at the top. I'd click this and I'd move to AC and you see how that immediately jumped up? Just like that, if I hit two and one now, right, I've removed all of that negative two volt DC voltage and I can actually do an overlay and they are identical. I'm still on channel two here. If I go back and use DC coupling, it passes both the AC and the DC. Okay, little bit of uh, fun stuff for you to check out. Anyway, with that, one last thing I'll do since I've got these a little offset is I'm gonna go ahead now and by changing, all I'm doing, guys, I know you can't see it. Um, what I'm actually doing here is I'm changing um, just some of the cycles or the settings here. I'm going to go ahead and bring this back up over the top. But I'm going to do one other thing. I am going to phase this. 180 degrees off and bada bing bada boom look at what I have there okay 
with it phased 180 degrees off, I can see both patterns overlaid and where they cross. Okay, what value is that? Well, if I saw that, okay, I'd know that there was either a capacitor or an inductor in the mix here on the feed because it, capacitors and inductors change the offset of the uh, phase. Anyway, all right. Well, that's all I have for you today. Uh, and uh, I'll go to myself coming up right now to kind of do the closing bit. But thanks a lot for watching. And hey, I've got a link to this unit down in the bottom uh, in the description. Okay, so if you want one of these, it's an Amazon Prime link. Go ahead and click it and uh, order it up. Have a great time. All right. Well, that kind of sums it up. You know, uh, 180 phase shift with a capacitor or an inductor uh, is based on voltage versus current and all sorts of other stuff like that. Uh, I don't know if you'd ever get to a 180 degree phase shift, but uh, it was fun showing you that. Um, and actually, it was fun showing you all this stuff. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned something you didn't know. Uh, and I hope if you already knew it, it refreshed your memory and made you want to go drag that scope out of the closet and use it. Um, we're going to try to have some more videos on oscilloscopes. Uh, I've got a uh, spectrum analyzer that I want to bring up on video. I want to hook the oscilloscope up to the output uh, of uh, a couple radios to look at the uh, uh, modulation envelope and all that stuff. So we got a lot of cool stuff coming up. With that, hey, if you like the video, click like on there. And if you haven't dis uh, subscribed yet, click on subscribe. Any questions you might have, make them down below in the comments. And I try to answer all questions or comments within a couple of days. So uh, believe me, I read these things and I really appreciate them. This is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73. And I hope to hear you out there on the air.